All right. Um, I wanted to do a, a little bit more about <clears throat> practical stuff and, and zone run and wanted to compare um, the C gap run butt of the tackle, or excuse me, butt of the ghost tight end and the A gap, what we call the A gap run, which is butt of the center. And you notice I have these lines here. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to consider the line of scrimmage in three sections. Okay, from the outside edge of the C gap to about the inside leg of the guard, we call that the stovepipe. Okay, this is the match area, and this is Apache. Okay, all right, now let me just explain to you. Match area, we don't, we, we're hoping to get leverage, but we're going to match the techniques. So if there's a, oh, I don't know, a, a Jet 9 out here, we're going to go, as we can stretch them as wide as we can, but we don't need to go and get in front of them. Okay, we want to threaten them. Now, if, if he is... Um, you know, uh, a six technique, nose up, uh, we're probably going to need some help. If we don't get help, we allow the guys to step with the inside foot, okay? But in this C-gap run, we're always going to get help, right? It's just the way it is. We call this the stovepipe because as the back runs to the outside edge of this area, he can make all these blockers right Okay, and these blockers want to cover their defenders. So, for example, a three technique. We want to get in front of the three technique and on its out on his outside. Okay, and we just say, get your helmet stripe across his stripe. This is the this is the scoot, the infamous scoot, where you take negative steps but you don't have negative force. Okay, your weight's not going negative. It's just your, your steps. I I don't know how else you're going to get in front of somebody who's not in front of you. Uh, you can knock them and drive them out, but that, that kind of directs the ball. What we want to do is give the, the, the runner the option, and he's going to put his foot right on that read spot. Okay, We want to give him the option of being able to make all these blockers right, either spit it or sink it. And if we, if we get in front of this guy, even if he penetrates a little bit, okay, we'll get around him. Generally speaking, if we can get outside, if we can get between the end and the, and the three technique, usually the next play is a kicking play, uh, PAT. Okay, um, it's hard to do, but if we can do it, it's pretty good. Okay, now this, like, we call this the stovepipe because the back is like smoke. He just finds the best way through the hole. Okay. All right, and remember, we just need to get, we want leverage here, okay? We just need to get in front here, and the back will make us right. And the Apache, we call it Apache because it's we're encircling the defense. We want the defender to not be able to pursue. So it's just like the Apache's surrounding Custer. This is Custer. This is the Apache. That's why we call it Apache. We don't want to go at this guy. Now, some people do. You know, and a lot of this stuff, when you when you have a zone read concept, which, you know, we had to, uh, you know, we really didn't have zone read runners. Um, uh, we had passers. And except for my, my last two years uh, at Ball State. But uh, these, uh, these guys, uh, we have to get them all blocked. Okay, we really don't want this, this guy down the line going to the read spot. We don't mind taking him to the read spot if he spikes. We can't keep him from spiking. Okay, but what we can do is encircle him. If he penetrates, the next guy should get him. Okay, but we don't want him to beat us. If he goes like, if he does turn and spike, we have a great angle on him to ear hole him. And we tell the guys, put your, put your eyes right through his ear hole. Okay, now, this is where the skip steps and all that stuff come into play that we've used. But basically, this is an arc, and we call this arc blocking. 
if we use skip steps, it's square, square uh, skip steps, which was um, kind of an innovation, but it was, and it was pretty good. Anyway, not to get too detailed with this right now, because the, the main goal would be this. Okay, when we go A gap, it's usually from the gun. We, we don't, I don't see the point in doing it. You know, pistol, um, you know, which is a form of gun. Um, I can't, I don't see the point of doing it from under center. Uh, anybody that's trying to run over the guards from under center usually gets, uh, they usually get beat up pretty good. Okay, but if we're going to the right, this becomes the match area. This is the stovepipe, believe it or not. And this is the Apache. So we're running to the right. This is supposedly the front side, but this is actually the front side. And when you're doing this, um, you really run the wishbone. I mean, this is this is actually gear blocking. So we're matching a technique here. And let me just pick a guy, put a three technique. We want to downshift. We don't want to step deep. Here we got to step deep. We got to scoot. We got to have both feet behind us okay we're taking negative steps here we don't need to take negative steps we're just going to match we're not trying to get this guy um we're not trying to get in front of him we're trying to match him okay and trying to throw him out all right it's it's you know matching says if i have leverage keep it don't give it up don't cross his stripe get as wide as you can to his stripe and match him now, if his if he's inside, and you don't you don't have help, and the way we've designed it, generally speaking, that the guard's always going to have help. The tackle may not. So let me go let me go to a tackle. If we have an, a a guy who we don't have leverage on, and we feel as though we need to, we can step with our inside foot. Okay, I don't really care anymore. I just I just don't want this guy hitting us with him. Uh, or, or the, what happens is this guy spikes and this guy sees the path of the back and he just sits there and the guard has to wind up. We don't want this guy sailing out of here expecting the backer to come over the top because he doesn't. He sees where the back... He, this guy, we tell this guy, we tell the backs, look, this guy doesn't want you. He wants the ball. That's an old Bill Cosby joke. Uh, I know he's he's kind of not like out of it right now, but that was a funny, that was a funny routine when he was a player at Temple. He realized that he was a running back, that the defense didn't want him. They wanted the ball. And what we say to these runners is wherever you go, that's where these guys who can see you are going to go. They're going to they're gonna get to you. So if we have this situation, okay, and we, we expect this guy to spike, no, no. What we're going to do is downshift if we can, and we're going to match the techniques. Okay, now well, the reason we like the A gap, uh, I'm going to get rid of the C gap here because we've already done that. But the reason we like the A gap as opposed to the B gap is, is kind of a, it's kind of about the center. Okay, now you got this kid who's got, who's got a shotgun snap. Okay, and if you give him a B gap run, he's more or less got to get in front of this guy. Okay, he's got to cover him up. But there's also the back gap problem. So you're telling him, cover him up, but you're telling him that somebody's got to hit that back gap. Now you can chase it, but then you, you run out of people. Okay. And the C gap, we really don't give a crap because he's an Apache. He's going to encircle. Okay. And this back gap thing, we can we have time to, to, to adjust to it with the guard. But when you're running B gap, you got a problem. What we'd rather do is run it in the A-gap, say to the center, look, you are a match blocker, okay? So if you have this dude right here, you don't have to cross his face. And if we can hay bale this, okay, this guy will inside step because the tackle is protecting him with an inside step. And we can hay bale this out and put the center on the... On the, uh, the uh, uh, the, the uh, backer flow, okay? And it kind of works out pretty good. So what we say to these guys is, look, the match blockers, okay, the guard has to protect the center. The tackle has to protect the guard, and so on and so forth. We don't, 
we learned this the hard way. We don't like to run to a three-man surface. We really like to run to a three-man surface um, uh, if, if we're reading the backside edge. But we don't like to put the, the count, we don't like to put the center on a blind side point. Like if we were running C gap right here, okay, and we said, well, we're going to point this guy. We're going to leave one for the tight end. So that's one. Um, so these guys would zone this thing up. Okay. Everybody would be happy. Now they probably will flow. And if they back flow, well, that's okay. The tackle will wind up on the mic. It's pretty easy. But when you're talking about a gap, there is no flow. And you get into all these crazy things where the, the tight end is by himself because, you know, uh, there, there's a million. Now, if you're reading it, no big deal. Okay. No big deal. You, you read it. And what we say is we want to keep the, the point back or we want to keep the center on a train. Okay. So if we have this 4-2 look, okay, we're all right. We're reading that. Okay, and I'll get into some of the some of the uh, all the, the issues and problems, but we really don't like this. We we prefer to have that on handoff. Okay, the sniffer back. Okay, and of course you know the RPOs and all that stuff. So what we what we try to do is stay away from this. And then you say, well, what about your quality, coach? Well, it's pretty simple. <laughs> you know, everybody's talking about duo, duo, duo. Well, you know, if you really think about it. Okay. Same side dive. Okay. It looks like it's zone going this way, but it's zone going that way, and it's just same side. The quarterback comes out, he pulls this guy, but we have a hat on everybody for the 4 2. Now, the other fronts, it doesn't matter. Uh, <coughs> again, the, the the question though is would be things like this okay we don't we don't really like to do this again for the back gap problems okay and I know I, I know I keep saying back gap back gap but we don't like to do this okay we would prefer to do this okay and then read our way out of that thing and release this guy or again have a sniffer to knock the back side of that edge off right we don't we don't like that we don't like that we don't like to put the the, the center on a middle backer so what we say is anything that is and we we learned this the hard way i don't know if it's right or not i'm just saying this is what we did okay well, if we have that, and we, and even if the quarterback points him, we don't want to. We don't want to make a center on point call. Okay, we'd rather train. We'd rather make a train. Okay, we'd rather train it and take our chances with this crew right here. Now, again, if you can read your way out of it, you're in great shape. Now, we had we got into these things, which which was really pretty good stuff. Okay, where he would go and, and either read, either block him and we'd read that or block him and we'd throw off of him. Okay, so those are those are some answers there. But going blind or we by let me let me explain that. Okay, we say this if we're going zone this way, this is your C side. This is where you're looking, and this is your blind side. This is where you really should never look. Okay, blind people feel the blind. They feel. They okay, you see this. If you're looking over here, you're going to get hit by a twist. Okay, something's going to happen. All right, we don't want that. Okay, so, and when we have the center going back side or blind side, okay, on an A-gap, we're, we're really... You know, we're giving up all sorts of messes here. And I'm sure you guys can do it. I'm sure they have plenty of film. And I'm sure that if I if I studied their film I'd find I'd find these these types of problems. Now the open edge, it's very seldom that you wouldn't be going this way. Okay. 
you know, uh, and and this is this is a big deal right now. Okay, we don't we don't. We, I mean, this guy is going here. He's going here. This guy is going. We, we like to not double team this. We'd like to go in there and dig him out. Okay, that's pretty easy. That's pretty easy stuff. And these guys are doing this. And what we say is, when we go train, when we run a train, we want to. We want to go to the spots with our blockers initially. We're not looking at guys. We're looking at space and time, and we're going to see who's coming to it. Okay. All right. So we're going to the spots. So then, if we if we chase out of here with this tackle, okay, he's got to make sure that there's nothing that's hitting him from here. And he can go and chase. There's a lot to it, but I know if you open up the splits a little bit, it's not a big deal. Okay. So anyway, going to that idea of the read spot, the match. Okay. The match area. Okay. Understanding why you want to do what you're doing. Okay. The first thing we have to deal with is this. Now, you know, you, you say what you want. Um. Uh, I say, you know, get out of it. Let's throw. You know, it's it's a seven man front. We only got five blockers or six blockers. Okay, even if you have the, the sniffer here. Okay, but then you know you you get into this and you start thinking about it. And the secondary is going to tell you something about what's going on here. Okay, so basically, if you have a formation that gets this guy to walk a little bit. All right. Um, let's think about this. You want, you know, if it's zone read, you want to leave one, and if it's if it's uh, sniffer blocking back, you want to leave one. Okay. But if you say to this to this guy right here, he's not a threat. Okay. Let's just let's just block it like so. You got a pretty good play. Okay. Now that's. Yeah, that's not a big deal. When you get into these four man, these four down sets, okay, where you have an odd spacing. Let's say we're going into the boundary, okay, and you have what we call a rhino because it's four down, okay. It gets a little touchy, all right. It's a little touchy. Now, if we're going over here, eh, no big deal. You can even read this guy. You know, you can you can do this and. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, and read him. I, I wouldn't. Re I, I don't like reading the three technique. I know people do it um, on the A gap, but I, I don't. I don't care for it. But you can either. Uh, we'd prefer to do that because otherwise, all you're doing is you're you're constantly handing the ball off. That's all you're doing. Okay, but again, the read zone stuff. You got to have a quarterback that's worth a darn. And the RPOs has helped that tremendously because now even if the quarterback, what we said was if the quarterback gets a sit read, he pulls the ball. Okay. Now, if we get a press to that side, okay, let's say we're going this way, and we get a press to that side, the tackle is going to make a decision. He's going to say, well, is this guy a threat? Okay. If he's not a threat, I'll just leave it go. If it's a threat, I'm going to I'm going to call the train and we're all going to go this way. Okay. And the sniffer will knock it back. All right. And um, but basically on the A-gap, we just tell him, hey, cut that dude loose. We're, you know, step inside if you have to. Just book him. Don't even worry about him. Okay. Let the quarterback deal with that with, with – uh, possible bubbles and things like that. Now, the, the problem is if you get a spin, well, you, you know, you, now you got to game plan it. And to me, you know, you're, you're six one half does the other. You really should be throwing, but, you know, you don't want to throw all the time either. Now, when you have a rhino and these, these guys are down linemen, it gets a little touchy going this way now. And again, what you want to say is, we're either going to hay bale this out, okay, and then everybody, now the center, we're, we're, that's an automatic train, okay, because this guy is, they're, they're alerting the center that he's got to take the point, and everybody's happy, 
and there's your zone read. But now they start fooling around with this thing. Okay, the the classic one is this one. All right, and it's pretty simple. Uh, they cop him out, spin the front this way. I mean, spin the secondary this way, and press him. And so now this guy will be alerting, and he'll be just telling them, "Hey, this guy's off. He's off. He's off. Let's handle it like so." And he's saying he's on, he's on, he's on, and he's either going to leave one for the quarterback, either this one or that one, okay? Um, and generally speaking, what we, because of the, the situation we had, we tried to leave that one, okay? And, you know, again, we're, we're running over here. So what we're saying is don't block this guy because he's not going to be a factor, okay? He's not going to be a factor. And we don't mind the center dealing with this guy. We, don't, we just don't like him blocking back or, or chasing a linebacker that's going blindside okay these guys we really don't care if this guy goes blindside and he's he's doing the proper uh, red light he can shut that off and make the backer come back to him this guy probably will do nothing more than a downshift okay and if this guy goes back gap right and if he's sniffing the back gap don't even worry about it just squeeze it okay and again your job here, you're you're on your own, you're by yourself, and if you don't have leverage on this cat right here, step Indian, step with the inside foot. In other words, you got leverage here, you can match it. Okay, you don't have leverage. Go ahead and step Indian. Okay, it's not a big deal. I know we're we're making a big mess here, but hopefully you're following me. Okay, and I've already done uh, 21. 22 minutes here and uh, I've gone a little bit further than I wanted to go but what again what we're what we have to have okay <coughs> we have to have these train calls that that put <coughs> that put us like so regard and some people block it like this all the time I watch like West Virginia and some of these they just all bang right and start running we can't do that because sometimes we hand the ball off um, you know, we don't we don't just read our way out of it all the time. And generally speaking, um, we haven't had a quarterback that that would make that worthwhile. But we don't want to go blindside on a gap. We do we we do want on c gap because we've got leverage. We're going to make a lot of yards. Okay, we can get that type of front. Okay, blindside front. Okay, everybody just kind of falls into it. And we're in business. We're running the ball out here. Okay. Anyway, that's what I got for you today. I don't know if it's worth it. We're getting into a little bit of detail. The kids understand it pretty easy. Um, at, you know, it's just a question of getting familiar with the verbiage and having. One thing I, I've learned is, I heard I heard a guy. Um, I think it was Russ Grimm at a clinic one time, saying if you have something different, even if it's similar, but different, give it a different name. And um, I've kind of gone in that direction because, like, these kids, they have, um, you know, they do these um, Twitters and all this other stuff, tweeters and space books and everything else. And they have millions of names and millions. Of, they can memorize this stuff very easily. But when you say, um, you know, like, this is this is a cup and that and this is a whatever and 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 this is whatever these are my my grandson's stuff here but if you all if you call them the same thing baby stuff you got a problem um give it a different name don't don't be afraid the kids will remember it they'll remember it a lot easier and it's just like when when somebody says hey coach and all your whole staff turns around or they say coach strollo and just coach strollo turns around all right um that's, uh, you know, language is everything. Uh, we, we said this the other day, my, my daughter and my wife we were all sitting around and we said, hey, can you have a thought without language? I don't know. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Right? You sure can't share it. Right? We'll see you. Bye.